Gaming keyboards don't have to look like this. Or this. Or, oh god, not that. What if I told you gaming keyboards could look something like, wait, enhance, like this? Meet Huhi, a pro League of Legends player. Hi guys. Oh, and his dogs, Dandy and Haru. Don't worry, they're important later. This story starts with a tweet and a howdy hey, I'm Hippiotech. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you that gaming keyboards don't have to look like this. By building Huhi, not one, not two, oh god, but four keyboards. I'll explain why it's four, it'll make a lot of sense later. Oh yeah, did I mention it cost almost three grand? Also, I can hear you thinking, Hippio, keyboards have gaming things like macros and, and latency and stuff. I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. If you wanna see how I built these keyboards and how you can build one of your own, then stick around. Speaking of building, if I build a million subscribers this year, I'll dye my hair blue. So the 69% of you that haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that. Now, as I mentioned before, this story begins with a tweet. Who he tweeted out that he was looking to build a custom keyboard and I said howdy hey and slid in his DMs. He's a pro League of Legends player and what can I say? I really like League of Legends, unfortunately. But there's a catch. It's November right now and he needs them by January, which is a very tight schedule for custom keyboards. With the goal of building him a keyboard, it was time to set out on a journey. What keyboard, what switches, what keycaps, oh my God, it's anything. First, it was time to start with the keyboard. With keyboards, there's a variety of layouts that you can go with, and who he wanted a TKL layout. Next, he wanted a custom engraving of his dog, so I needed a board that I could actually get custom engraved. Now, because custom engraving is so ridiculous, this actually narrowed things down a lot for me, so I ended up going with the Promise 87. Now, you're still probably wondering why he wanted four of them. Well, the simple explanation is that he needed two for the League of Legends offices, one for home, and one for his own office. <laughs> That only covers one of the three parts, but don't worry, we'll get into the other two parts later. First, let's talk about how we got the keyboards. So, Wuche Studios has been a sponsor of mine in the past, so I reached out to them and said, Hey, I'm building a keyboard for a pro player, can you help me customize it? And they were like, yeah, sure, one keyboard, yeah, that's fine. And then I was like, can you do four? And they were like, oh yeah, sure, that's fine. And I was like, wow, okay, that was way easier than I was expecting. Now, this keyboard comes in at a whopping $540 for the bespoke edition that I'll leave down below. You can actually get it customized yourself. They do it in very small batches though, so keep an eye out for restocks. Now, if you want a custom keyboard of your own, but are on a budget, then I recommend you check out the video in the top right after this video, where I talk about my favorite keyboards of all of the ones I tried last year. But with this keyboard, we are going absolutely all out. Speaking of all out, there were a lot of extras in every keyboard. Also, as you watch this, imagine me doing this four times. This, I was definitely in over my head for this one, way in over my head. So this journey started back in November when we started picking out keyboard parts and such. And I had these boards in my hand uh, roughly mid-December. Now the Promise 87 is definitely one of the most beautiful keyboards that I've ever built. And yes, that is a real grown crystal, like one of the conflict-free ones that doesn't involve murder. And overall, the design of this board is absolutely stunning. I figured if I was building a keyboard for a pro player, this keyboard better step up to the bat and look pro. You know, if you're trying to think of why the diamond makes sense, you know, I was gonna say, oh, he's diamond in League of Legends, but he's way better than diamond, so I kinda lost that. Speaking of things that are lost, you might lose yourself if you look into this keyboard's back plate, as it's a beautiful, beautiful mirror. One massive request from Huhi is that he wanted his dogs, Dandy and Haru, on his keyboards. So we took the pictures of his dogs, and we had the designers over at Wuche Studios do up a nice little vectorized rendering. Now, this combined with the PVD mirror gold finish means that the back of these keyboards is absolutely gorgeous and definitely a fingerprint magnet. Speaking of fingerprints, well, this is kind of a stamp print. All of the accessories in this board were sealed with a wax seal, which is a very luxurious touch. But now it's time to talk about an arduous part of the build, lubing the stabilizers, which I'm gonna magically do. Why didn't it happen? Oh no, no, don't teleport me to the lube dimension. No, no. Okay, so really fast, I'm gonna teach you how to lube keyboard stabilizers. If you don't know what's going on here, trust me, you'll wanna know what's going on here. All I do is take a light layer of Crytox 205 grade zero, I brush it on the inside of a stabilizer housing, and then I brush a really thick layer on the little wire. You're probably wondering, why am I doing this? Why are you doing this, Hippio? Well, these stabilizers are the most important part of any keyboard build. Properly lube stabilizers mean that your big keys, like your spacebar, shift, etc., do not rattle and remain really consistent. I genuinely spent a whole entire day lubing and tuning the stabilizers for every one of these boards. A whole day! 
but that's just because I wanted them to feel exactly identical. For you, it would only take about 30 minutes. Now it's time for part two. Switches. Now, switches are one of the most important parts of any keyboard. And honestly, a lot of gaming keyboards do have decent switches. Like, take a look at some of the Asus boards or Wooting. Mm. Now, Huhi had clicky switches, and just honestly, clicky switches or tactile switches aren't really the best for gaming, but it is totally subjective. But ultimately, we decided on a mid-weight linear switch. When picking switches yourself, things to look for are spring weight, so it's how heavy it is to press, travel distance, which means it would actuate faster, etc. Now I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I didn't feel like lubing 348 switches myself, so I went with the best possible factory lube switch I could think of that I've tried, okay? There might be better switches. These are WS yellows and I'll have them linked down below. They come in a bunch of different spring weights and they also have tactiles and stuff as well. Also, you're probably wondering what I'm doing right now. Well, I'm attaching the gaskets and there's a cat foot. This board is a gasket mounted keyboard and there's a variety of mounting styles and keyboards, but gasket mount basically means that it's gonna be a little bit more dampened and oh, here comes the cat. But yeah, it'll be a little bit more dampened and a little bit softer to type on. Additionally, to dampen the keyboard so it's not too loud because nobody wants to be the guy in a gaming group that's too loud, looking at you. So I'll be adding some foam to the keyboard just to give it that semi dampened sound but not too much foam so that I take away the gasket performance. It's still relatively flexible. Now, fine tuning custom keyboard sounds is one of the things that I enjoy the most about custom keyboards. And you could do this to a standard gaming keyboard if you take it apart and fill it with foam and stuff, but it's just a little bit easier when you're already building it anyways. Now, again, I don't hate gaming keyboards. There are some very good gaming keyboards out there, but you know, wouldn't you rather have your gaming keyboard look like this with a diamond or something else? I mean, just. Being able to customize it at all is relatively cool. Oh, yeah. And that brings us to part three, keycaps. Keycaps are where this video gets a little bit more difficult. So we went through a ton of different keycap set aesthetics to pick two of who he's favorites. First, we have GMK Godspeed, which is from Drop. And second, we have Polycaps Hippo, which I swear, this was not an industry plant. He picked this from the keycap sets that I showed him. Of course I did show him this. I mean, uh, come on, it's my keycap set. Keycap sets come in a bunch of different profiles and two main materials. Now, these are cherry profile keycaps, and the Hippo keycaps are in PBT, whereas the GMK keycaps are in ABS. There is a minuscule feel difference and a kind of substantial sound difference between ABS and PBT, but ultimately, after testing out both of them, I didn't feel like it was a very big issue, and I don't think who he did either. And neither did Nola, who had a great time helping me build the keyboards. If you want a whole video of Nola helping me build a keyboard, I'll put it in the top right. Also, a bonus fact about this keyboard, it uses a 7U spacebar, which is just a little bit bigger than your standard spacebar. I thought that would be kind of helpful uh, for having an easier reach to the spacebar. Also, the deadline of January 19th was coming up very, very fast. I got very sick over Christmas time, so I kind of just lost two weeks of build time but I did manage to scrounge together the builds. The first build, well, the Haru build, is a beautiful blue and tan, and the second build, the dandy build, is a lovely, lovely lavender. Now you're probably thinking, Hippio, that's, that's only two boards and you built them four. Well, I did build two identical copies of each set. As I mentioned before, he's a pro League of Legends player, and the LCS, which is their league, requires them to have two of the same keyboard constantly on hand. And of course, because he wants to practice on the same keyboard when he's not playing professionally, he also needs one of the same keyboard at his offices and one at home. That did take like eight minutes to explain. My bad, I probably should have explained that earlier. But look at the squishy keyboard. It, it's kind of squishy. Ooh, yeah. One of the strongest arguments against using a custom keyboard is that the input lag is too high. Now, while it is true that some keyboards have less input lag than others, this keyboard compared to something like the Razer Black Widow Mini is actually better. I'm really oversimplifying this here, but most mechanical keyboards will have a similar enough latency. It's not the same for every keyboard, but on average, you're looking at a difference of 10 milliseconds or so. The biggest exception being switches like the Hall Effect switches that'll have a meaningful impact. Now, obviously with each of these keyboards costing roughly $700 each, do I necessarily recommend everybody go out and build a $700 keyboard? No, but what you can do is use some of these techniques and apply them to more budget boards. For example, these keyboards offer the finest materials, impeccable sound quality, a great typing experience, but you can also get just good enough and all of that for significantly cheaper. 
but you just might not get a custom engraved dog on the back. Now, one thing you can get for relatively cheap is my line of desk mats at kineticlabs.com. I've got three different desk mats that ship right now for only $23.99. Check them out. And now it was time for part four. What's Huhi's thoughts on all of the keyboards? Hi guys, I'm Huhi, and I just got my custom built keyboard. And I'm really excited how it looks. Oh, okay. I think this one, I got two versions, and this one, oh, damn, this looks so good. Oh my God, it's so heavy. And then, whoa, it's actually so heavy. It's my first custom keyboard. So it's dandy, and it's purple. So I got basically two same boards. Yeah. It's so, so good. Hey, you liked it? Hippo made it work. So thanks to him. Thank you. So what did we learn today? Gaming keyboards don't have to look like gaming keyboards, and thankfully, Huhi really likes them. Now listen, if you like the look of your gaming keyboard, that's fine, keep liking it, that's totally okay, but leave a comment as to why you like it, I'd love to know why, is it the RGB? Next, I'm gonna leave you with a sound test of what the two different keyboards sound like. Let me know if you can spot any difference between them.